dirt. Shortstop made a great play on it. Greg Johnson, the leadoff hitter, 0 for 2 with a walk on tonight. And Kafuri in with a breaking ball. Kafuri 11 and 1 last year, primarily as a starter. But Tom Holliday, the Cowboy pitching coach, more excited about this pitching staff than any in some time. The Cowboys, known for their great hitting, have a team ERA this year of 308. And the pitch out, nothing doing by the Gophers. And now Kafuri in middle relief duty. I would think if he could get them through the sixth inning, we would see Mike Gardella or Gordy Tipton or maybe even Donnie Goble in the last three innings. They're the guys they'll use to try to close it out if they're tie or get the lead. Well, up to this point, we've had outstanding relief. That's Pat True, your runner at first. Did he go? Yes, his home plate umpire, Kurt Marino. Let's take a look and see if he did offer it to Bump. Yes, he did. Oh, yeah. And I guess fundamentally, not really the way you'd like to see a hitter bunt at the ball. There's an idea of the effective relief pitching Oklahoma State has had this year. Fine ERA and strikeouts per inning, so... I guess once again one of those old sayings in baseball if you don't get a team early your chances become a little slimmer and this is unusual because we don't see a lot of solid bullpens in college baseball we've had some some outstanding starting pitching but not a lot of teams that have bullpen depth like Oklahoma State well it certainly shows that they're they've been effective uh, an ERA of less than two with four or five fellows out there John Anderson pleading his case and what he was doing there with his hands is I think he feels like Kafuri is balking or not coming to a stop with that hand in the glove in the set position. You see the little diamond down in the lower left of your screen and the red dot that indica indicates the base runner at first. <laughs> Pat True, the runner, with one down here in the bottom of the sixth. We've got a 6-6 six -six tie if you joined us a little late. Towards short, Bean Blossom knocks it down, can't come up with it. Made a great play knocking the ball down, but in hitting the turf, jarred the ball loose. And Greg Johnson has an infield single. There's an out outstanding defensive play there that ball wasn't hit real well it was hit toward the end of the bat but if he comes up with this and can regain his feet he has a shot him at first base that's a great play and so Johnson breaks the spell and gets his first hit in tonight's game and sets up the lineup for John Anderson he now has Brian Robbie his best all-around player Brent Gates and Dan Wilson the next three hitters with the lead run in scoring position. The Fury misses with the breaking ball. Let's go back to that sacrifice bunt that wasn't. That's an interesting thing there. Yeah. That could have put the Gophers ahead by now. Breaking ball misses the. Ooh! Kurt Marino gives him the high strike on the slider, and it evens the count a ball and a strike. Two and one now to Robbie. Well, they have the meat of their order coming up. Brian Robbie out of New All, Minnesota. And if that name is familiar to you, yes, that's the home of all star catcher Terry Steinbach. Grounded towards short, could be two. Bean Blossom to Simons, to Cervantes, and Kafuri. Pitches out of trouble here in the sixth. The Gophers get a couple of base runners on the Carlson error and the Johnson single. But the double play ground ball by Robbie gets Kafuri out of trouble. 
six complete at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Cowboys and the Gophers are tied at six. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Now the Gophers have a great program up here in the Twin Cities, and there's a look at some of the big leaguers that they've produced, just the active ones. Going back to the days of the Chief, Dick Siebert, who really built the program. George Thomas, former player with Dick Williams, coach now John Anderson. And I guess, Dick, if there are three days that are more exciting in the life of a ball player, it's opening day, all-star game, and opening day of the World Series. And here we are on the eve of opening night of the 1989 Major League Baseball season. You know, this spring went by awful fast, Jim. They go faster every year, don't they? And this game now moves into the top of the seventh inning. Tied at six, and catcher Tony Kunis will lead it off for the Cowboys. And if you're a player, a coach, or a manager, if you don't get the tingles on opening day, there's something wrong. Yeah. That's the time to get out of the game, I think, as, you, as a veteran player. That's in for a strike. You know, when they say, what's the right time to quit for an opening, for an older player? Well, if you're standing on that foul line on opening day and don't get excited about it, you're right. That might be the time to give it up. You always have the thrills in the All-Star game or the World Series. But opening day, that's a special occasion. Low and inside to Kunis, and Lowry falls behind in the count two and one. John Lowry took over for left-hand starter Denny Nagel, who had no hit the Cowboys through the first four. Swung on and missed. He's got good command. You know, for left-handers, I guess they always talk about left-handers when they're young having more control problems than right-handers, but I think we're beginning to see a change in that. A lot of lefties with good command of the curve and the changeup. You know, I wouldn't mind having a, a pitching rotation of five left-handed starters and five left-handed relievers. Well, if, they're, if that pitch right there from Lowry is any indication how effective a lefty can be, the changeup again. That's, he's way out in front of him. Just an outstanding change, outstanding motion. And the third straight strikeout for John Lowry. Of course, they'll be packed in here Tuesday night at the Metrodome when the Yankees and Twins go at it. And another couple of crafty left-handers that can get that off-speed stuff over. Cy Young Award winner Frank Viola and Tommy John. wasn't even supposed to go to camp. Lowry in with strike one to Bosco. Of course, right here on ESPN in 1990, you can watch Major League Baseball. Over 150 games right here in the Total Sports Network. Lowry misses with that breaking ball, and the count is one and one. Off the outside edge, two balls and a strike. Bosco with a base hit back in that six-run fifth inning. The Cowboys sent nine men to the plate. Rounded foul outside a third. Six consecutive base hits before Lowry came on and got the side out. There you see what he's done so far. Perfect in two and a third with three strikeouts. He's done an outstanding job. And throwing strikes. This is where that one count runs full. Speed pitch grounded to third. Good play by Anderson. Throw across the diamond. And the footwork by first baseman Munson to complete the putout. And Lowry now perfect through two and two thirds. Off this AstroTurf, infielders always worried about that lip on the cutout sliding pitch. 
seventh game. I hate to keep going back, but the seventh game of the 72 series, we won that game by one run, and we had a bad hop off of Menke's glove that hit the lip against Cincinnati. Simons with the big double and the two RBIs back in the fifth inning to bring the Cowboys within one, then scored the tying run on Bean Blossom's ground out. Breaking ball high, even to count a ball and the strikes. Two down here in the top of the seventh inning. Jim Cott along with Dick Williams bringing you the action, the last game of this Pillsbury Classic in the Metrodome. The Gophers of Minnesota and the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. They met on Thursday night. The Cowboys won that one four to one. Center field and Johnson will have to play that in front of him on a hop. Simons has a two out single. And immediately, Dick, the thought that Simons would be off and running with one of the first two pitches. You've got two outs, a tie ball game, and one of your best space dealers at first base. And you have a left-handed hitter up there, even though it's a left-handed pitcher, that's going to hamper the catcher a little. Now, would you want to wait for a count to get him to go, or would you just say, hey, here's a guy, 8 out of 12. Let's send him and see if he can get into scoring position with a lead run. Gary Ward says on most of his runners, he has a don't steal only so I think they have the green light in this situation this is an important situation one thing of course that'll make it a little more difficult for Simons here is the left hand pitcher that can pull that runner on a little bit better that wasn't as good one and talking about the sliding pitch, the runners will use that as a gauge. They'll sneak out. I'm sure Brock and Wills and guys like that would try to get one foot on the turf. The real fast ones get two feet on the turf. Yeah. Towards second, Robbie cuts it off. The flip toss to Lowry. Got him by a half a step. Wow. Post play at first base to John Lowry. Once again, keeps the Gophers in the ball game. Gives up the two-out single to Mitch Simons. Totals after six and a half. Six to six, Gophers and Cowboys don't go away. We'll be back with more college baseball right after this. Your, uh, your top ten in collegiate baseball, Texas A&M. You'll see them right here on ESPN in a couple of weeks. LSU, 39 runs in the three-game sweep of Alabama this weekend. Gene Stevenson is Wichita State Shockers. Eight and two on a recent trip to Hawaii. The Hurricanes, fourth. Mississippi State, 21 and five in fifth spot. The Sun Devils, sixth. The Longhorns, seventh. These Oklahoma State Cowboys are the eighth-ranked team. And then Dave Snow has done a great job with Cal State at Long Beach. And Arizona and Jerry Kendall ranked tenth. That's Rick Bay, the left of your screen the new athletic director at Minnesota talking a little college sports and boy there's a lot of them to talk about this time of the year women's basketball men's basketball hockey college baseball back to live action the Gophers in the bottom of the seventh will lead off with Brent Gates their freshman shortstop Outside for a ball to even the count at one. Tom Kafuri in relief of Randy Rivera keeping his Cowboys in the game. Squib toward third. Carlson can't come up with it, and the Gophers have a base runner. That was a tough play. Yeah, even probably though it's a much, much tougher play than it looks because of the corkscrew spin on it. Right. ball had a lot of spin it just rolled right up his uh, his his wrist off the heel of his glove I don't know if he'd have been able to make a play had he come up with it so the Gophers have a base runner to lead off the seventh and their cleanup hitter Dan Wilson steps in Wilson on the night is two for three and has scored two runs they scored that in air Jim that's a tough play Tough error for Bobby Carlson. Wilson takes the fastball from Kafuri in for a strike. Updated hockey scores there in the bottom of your screen. 
nice block by Kunis. I guess those are things that go unnoticed in the box score, but appreciated by managers. Here you got a tie ball game, seventh inning, and, and just a little block like that by Kunis keeps the lead run out of scoring position. That's the case where a pitcher won't be afraid to throw that ball in the dirt. They know they have a catcher back there that can block it. I mean, everything doesn't have to be waist high down the middle. You can't pitch that way, Jim. You know that. Yeah, that's a good point. If you have a, a catcher back there that you know can block the ball, gives you a little more confidence in throwing that breaking ball down in the strike zone where you're supposed to throw it. Gates back quickly. Talk about academic All-Americans. Here's a young man, sophomore Dan Wilson, carrying a 3.7 grade average. Lays off the high fastball. Two and one, nobody out. Gophers trying to advance that lead run to second base. John Anderson, in his eighth season here at Minnesota, said this is the top player I have ever recruited. One of the most sought-after high school players. This one driven down the line into the right field corner. Just foul. Burnitz runs out of room. And first base umpire Charlie Larkas says no. Just foul. It wasn't too far foul. They'll be running all day on this one if it stays fair. Just by a foot. So Wilson showing some good power to the opposite field. Hits it right down in the corner. Gates will retreat to first base. There's a look at the Oklahoma State bullpen. Mike Gardella, the lefty, and Gordy Tipton. The Kent to Colby clone on the right side there. And with all the right-handed hitters in the lineup, he faces usually only right-handed hitters. Well, this will be unusual if Carl Johnson, the right-hander from the Gophers, comes into the ballgame. You're going to see two pitchers in the college level that both come from submarine to sidearm, similar to Kent Tocalvi and Dan Quisenberry. Runner on the move, and he's got second base stolen easily. So Gates moves into scoring position. Now, Dick, you've got a situation. You have your cleanup hitter in the box, a 3-2 count, and obviously you'd like to see the hitter hit the ball to the right side and advance the runner, but with your cleanup hitter in a full count, that might be asking an awful lot of him. Well, he's got pretty good bat control, and he's been shooting for that hole over there. He just missed hitting the ball down the right field line. And you have a heads-up base runner on second base. Driven to right field. It. Did what he had to do. Burnett's back near the wall, comes up with it. A nice catch in right field, but Gates will advance easily to third base, and what a great at bat by Dan Wilson. Did what he had to do, and he, he nearly hit the ball out of the ballpark. To the manager's or coach's box score. <laughs> And with Gates advancing to third base to put the lead run on third here in the seventh inning, Tom Holliday, the Cowboy pitching coach, will make a trip to the mound. Here he comes. And a point to the bullpen. They want the right-hander, Gordy Tipton. So Kafuri does a good job. He keeps the Cowboys in the game. Tipton will come on with the lead run at third base and one out here in the bottom of the seventh. The Cowboys and the Gophers still tied at six. We'll be back in just a moment. Right-hander Gordy Tipton, a six-foot-four-inch junior out of Sand Springs, Oklahoma, pitched junior college ball at Connor State. See what he's done so far this year. Four saves. And coming in to face the right-hand hitter with that submarine sidearm motion 19 strikeouts in 18 innings 
And Dick, we're seeing a bit of big league strategy at the college level here with maneuvering this bullpen late in the game. Well, we have two outstanding coaches, and Gary Ward said they would do, his pitching coach Tom Holliday said they would do exactly this if the situation came up. Uh, this young man already has two saves in the, in the Classic. He inherits Brent Gates, the runner at third base. Of course, he still on the record belongs to Tom Kafuri. Kafuri did a great job in the three and a third innings he worked after Rivera was touched for six innings, six runs in the first three innings. Kafuri came on to start the fourth, and the Gophers picked up just two hits off Kafuri and the one to lead off this inning. Rather questionable single that was topped down to third base. Jay Anderson will be the hitter. And we've got a ball game here that I'm sure many expected uh, Oklahoma State with all their firepower to be somewhat of a mismatch for the Gophers. But I think Minnesota showing everyone tonight the great program they have had here for many years and why they are the Big Ten defending champions. You know, that's a good thing also that uh, John Anderson was saying should they play up here early in the year and they have inclement weather and it doesn't uh, conflict with the twins they can come right in here and play and Anderson delivers with a shot to right center Burnitz cuts it off but the Gophers have taken the lead seven to six here in the bottom of the seventh sidearm underarm didn't seem to bother him well, he did what good hitters try to do off that kind of a delivery hit it the other way and breaks the tie a run is a run but that was an un unearned run and Kafiri probably deserves a little better than what he got Jeff Munson the first baseman Steps in for the first time against Tipton. He's two for three on the ball game with an RBI, his 15th of the year. And the sidearm breaking ball. That will kind of test your courage a little there as a right-hand hitter when you see that breaking ball coming from down under. That pitch is tough on a right-hander. Hit deep to left field. Perna back, looking up. Can't find the ball, and it bounces into the left field stands for a ground rule double. Perna, the left fielder, though I doubt he would have caught the ball anyway, had trouble picking up that fly ball, hit deep to left center. As he was going over, he ran, he looked up, and then uh, evidently took his eye off the ball because he ran again, and he knew, did not know at all where the ball was. He's just waiting for it to hit somewhere. It doesn't look like he would have received uh, uh, enough room to get the ball. I think that's an example. Anybody that's played in the dome, and it's kind of unfair for youngsters coming in here never having played in the dome before, but outfielders that have played here will tell you, you cannot take your eye off the ball for a minute. Outdoors, you can usually look around, find the warning track, look back up and see the ball. Not in the dome. If you take your eye off it for an instant, as Perna did there, you'll have trouble picking it up again. So the Gophers with that ground rule double now put men on second and third with one out for co-captain Vince Pallion. And they've broken the tie here in the seventh to take a 7-6 lead. Now Gary Ward says, let's put them on. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Catcher sitting outside <laughs> and tipped and fooled everybody, including the home plate umpire with that one. <laughs> All of us. Now the Cowboys try to get their signals straight. Kunis signals for the pitch out. Tipped and throws the ball right down Broadway, or in Minneapolis, I guess they'd say right down Hennepin. So they're going to put Pallion on to get to right-hander Joel Walrup and set up the double play. Oh. 
Brian Hartman in the on-deck circle. And with the side-arming right-hander on the mound, Coach John Anderson will switch to a pinch hitter. See what the see what the Cowboys wanted to do there, Dick. They wanted to bring their first baseman and play him in foul territory in case the ball got away. Can't do that. You can't do that. And Tipton completes the intentional walk. Anderson with a little encouragement for his pinch hitter, Brian Hartman. You know, that, looking back over that intentional walk, I can't recall a catcher getting down in his crouch with his hand out. Usually they stand up yeah. and then just step outside. So a little pressure on freshman Brian Hartman from Arlington, Minnesota. And he also serves as the backup catcher for the Gophers. He'll come to bat here for the first time. With the bases gotcha. loaded and one out, the Gophers leading by a run. Now here's a play you won't see too often right here on any level of baseball. The Cowboys signaling for the pitch out. Outside edge, evens the count. Get another look at that tricky non pitch out. <laughs> the only way that could have been called a ball is for height. It yeah. might have been a little high. And Pallion shaking his head saying, Why wasn't I ready for that one? Popped up behind the plate. And that'll go out of play. <laughs> You see the red squares there in the bottom left of your screen in our baseball diamond indicating the runners and they're on every base. The Gophers have them loaded. <laughs> Upstairs for a ball. Jay Anderson at third base. He got the RBI single to break the tie. Munson at second. And co-captain Pallion at first. Fouled out of play again, so Hartman hangs in. A ball and two strikes. He's up with all his pitches, though, Jim. Yeah, you like to see that side-arming right-hander with that kind of action to have that ball sinking down around the knees. The ground ball. The object here for Gary Ward is to try to get the double play grounder. That would way outside. The count even at two and two. In. Ward has his infield playing at double play depth. He's looking for the ground ball to turn the double play the conventional way and not make the play at home. Woo, got that slider up again. Hartman with a good swing and the count holds at two and two. He's brought it up to about sidearm now instead of underarm. And a little communication problem here between catcher Tony Kunis and pitcher Gordy Tipton. So they'll talk it over. Of course, in these situations, catcher and pitcher, you want to be sure of your signs because anytime there's a runner on second, they'll change the sequence of signs. We we know that the basic ones are as old as the game itself, right? One's a fastball, two's a curve. And they throw a switch so the runner on second won't give what's coming to the hitter. Popped up outside of first. Cervantes giving chase, but he'll run out of room. So Hartman hanging tough against the side-arming right-hander. Nice welcome for us here at ESPN from the Gopher Faithful. There you see your line score with the Gophers scoring the lead run in this seventh inning. Hit sharply towards second. Simons to Bean Blossom. 
And good play. The Cowboys are out of dodge in the bottom of the seventh. Simons knocks it down, flips the Bean Blossom. The inning-ending double play, but not before. The Gophers take a one-run lead into seven. Seven-six, Minnesota. And to complete our top 20 in collegiate baseball, Clemson in the 11th spot, the Trojans from Southern Cal, Arkansas, the California Golden Bears, and San Jose State in the 15th spot. Then Fresno State, Bob Bennett has a good ball club there. The two Florida clubs, 17 and 18, Houston, and then UAB rounds out the top 20. Fresno State got off to that tough start. What were they, one and five, I believe. And they have three, I think, three players on that team. You've seen that ball club that could go first round in the draft. The shortstop, Eddie Zosky. Tom Goodwin, who had a tough night, I think, that night. Yeah, and, but then uh, he went over to Hawaii when they played over there, and he just broke loose. And then Hosey out in right field. Yeah, he's a stallion. I mean, he's got 6'3", uh, 220, one of those chances to, to be an outstanding all-around player. We go to the top of the eighth. The Gophers nursing a one-run lead, and John Lowry... Still on the mound for the Gophers. We'll face Brad Bean Blossom, the junior shortstop. Oh, incidentally, between innings, Gary Ward had another one of his powwows down there with his whole ball club out in front of his dugout. They erupted for six runs in the fifth inning when he did that. Let's see what takes place here. And that's upstairs. Lowry falls behind Bean Blossom, two and one. Bean Blossom out of Louisville, Kentucky. And as we've said before, a four-point student. You know, the only four-point I can relate to is ERA. I can't relate to that <laughs> four-point grade average. Off-speed pitch, driven to center field, but right at Greg Johnson. And Lowry once again making good use of the off-speed pitch. There's the gopher bullpen. Carl Johnson on the left of your screen and John Rogie, the right-hander on the right of your screen. That's Tipton's counterpart over there. Two side armors. And he was not an underhander, side armor, Johnson wasn't, when he came to the University of Minnesota. Ortiz takes the first pitch from Lowry in for a strike. So the Gophers counting down the outs now with that one run lead and this a big inning for them because they're moving through the meat of the Oklahoma State order here. Fouled out of play quickly ahead of Ortiz 0 and 2. So that young freshman left hander from Shepherdstown West Virginia doing some job for John Anderson here in middle relief he stands to be the winning pitcher right now if the Gophers would hang on and you see Ortiz still 0 for the dome but coming into this series 14 homers 37 RBIs he was hitting 386 Kind of been a waiting game going on between Gary Ward's hitters and the Gopher pitchers. The Gopher pitchers, Lowry and Nagel, like to work quickly. Got him with a high fastball. Big strikeout for the freshman lefty. And two down here in the top of the eighth. Ortiz, through this whole classic, has been uh, over anxious. Here he chases the ball out of the strike zone. Usually they've been throwing a lot of off-speed pitches uh, to him, and he's been uh, a little over anxious going after him. Bad pitches. That time it was a high fastball. And now Lowry will get to face another left-hand hitter. And check that. We may... Well, I thought we might see a pinch hitter for a moment, but once again, I think an indication of Gary Ward's strategy. He is trying to slow the tempo down of John Lowry. Lowry has breezed through these last three and a third innings that he's been in there. Upstairs with the fastball. 
Burnett's on the night one for three and scored a run back in that big six run fifth when the Cowboys tied the game. He started the rally off. He got the first base hit off off of uh, Nagel. Broke up the no hitter and eventually the shutout. Almost looks uh, like a left handed Oral Hershiser with that nice innocent face right there. John Lowry. Gets the change up in on 2 and 0. Oh. And a big pitch there with two out in the top of the eighth inning. He doesn't seem phased. Just the one single by Simons in the top of the seventh. And misses the breaking ball, falls behind 3 and 1. Puts it on the outside corner. I'm sure in a hitting situation right there, Burnitz was saying, boy, if I can get a fastball on the inside part of the plate, even though he's not known as a pull hitter, that's what you got to be thinking in this situation with a one-run ball game. To drive the ball. Down the right field line, but foul. Got the change up, up and in. Jeremy Burnitz out of Conroe, Texas, led this Cowboy team in hitting last year, hit 403. And now once again, Lowry and Wilson. I think this can be a, a disruption when you get pitches called from the bench because Lowry is out there waiting for the pitch to be sent in from Mike D to catcher Wilson and then on to the pitcher and we've really slowed things down. The deep the defensive alignment in the outfielder is a huge gap in left center but he's thinking pull all the way. And They're, this one fouled too. They're giving him big hole in left center field. He could run all day. Yeah the only way he's going to hit one it's going to get over Greg Johnson's head in center is if it's a home run. And he misses with the 3-2 pitch. The Cowboys have a two-out base runner in the top of the eighth inning. Different schools of thought there, I think, Dick. You've got a one-run lead late in the game. You play your outfielders so deep, I'm sure, to guard against the extra base hit. But on AstroTurf, a looping fly ball, by the time it comes down, is going to be a double anyway. That's right. Still, the ball in the hole on either side could go for a triple. And the outfield continues to play deep for the Gophers. Bobby Perna up with two outs. A strikeout victim back in the sixth inning. Burnett, as we mentioned before, is six out of eight on stolen base attempts. But here's the left-hander that's holding him close. And the pitch upstairs for a ball. You've got the outstanding throwing arm of Dan Wilson behind the plate, the left-hand pitcher on the mound to help freeze the runner. So despite Bernitz's good speed, not a real high percentage situation to steal the base. And catches the knees on the outside edge to even the count of ball and a strike. They're still taking that first pitch. There you see the indication of the runner at first, Jeremy Burnett's two down, top of the eighth inning. John Lowry has worked three and two thirds for the Gophers. Four strikeouts and given up just the one base hit. Curve ball is in, and he's ahead in the count now, a ball and two strikes. Goes after the high fastball, fouled out of play. The count will hold at one and two. Oops. 
Thought he had him on that foul pop. He was hoping the foul pop would stay in there. He didn't like the pitch itself because it was way up and out of the strike zone, but a, a hanger like that can go a long way. He's pretty well freezing burning to first base. Even though he has one foot out on the AstroTurf. The straightaway center field, Greg Johnson should have this. And he puts it away for out number three. So John Lowry works his way out of trouble after the two out walk to Burnett's. And the Gophers continue to hold the lead at the Metrodome. Bottom of the eighth, Minnesota seventh, Oklahoma State sixth. I'm Joe Spencer with great news for you van enthusiasts. Now through Monday at Rosedale Chevrolet, we're holding our annual preseason conversion vanathon sale. We've got over 75 conversions in stock and priced from only $69.95. We're featuring the big names in van conversions. Waldock, Gladiator, Winnebago, and Mark III. Enjoy discounts up to $5,000. And with the purchase of a new van, receive a free Nintendo video game with two cartridges. So hurry to Rosedale Chevrolet and Geo, 35W and County Road C in Roseville. Authentic Russell Athletic Sweats at Dave's Sports Shop. High quality, American made durability that's built for action. Russell Athletic Sweats at Dave's Sports Shop. For baseball and softball leagues, a tremendous supply of rugged, protested equipment and custom uniforms delivered before your first game. Plus, 25% off on teams ordering before May 1st. Russell Athletics at Dave Sports Shop, Fridley and Maple Grove. Harvard Trip wood stains, thick and color rich, twice as much pigment as other stains, easy to use, just one coat gives you perfect results. Try Carver Trip, top quality. Well, stay tuned to Sports Center. Chris Berman and Larry Burnett will preview the NCAA final game tomorrow night between Michigan and Seton Hall. Should be a good one. Then a conversation with Cincinnati Reds owner Marge Schott and a look at the interesting plays of the week. So stay tuned to Sports Center right after our game here at the Metrodome. A couple of changes for the Cowboys defensively. Over at third base, Coca will come on to play third. Eric Coca. And the left fielder will be Mick Ward. Nephew of head coach Gary Ward. They used him to pinch run in yesterday's game, and he scored the winning run. The Gophers nursing that one-run lead come up here in the bottom of the eighth inning off right-hander Gordy Tipton. Pat True, the left fielder, will lead it off. breaking ball way outside for a ball you see Tipton like a lot of relief pitchers now Dick and I don't know when this started but they work strictly from the set position even when there's nobody on base well that's how they're usually called into a ball game inside edge says Kurt Marino evens account at one and one I think it's a good idea Jim yeah, you spend most of your time warming up like that in the bullpen. Fouled straight back off the mask of Tony Kunis. Haven't had a chance really to tell our viewers of really a neat story about head coach John Anderson. Arm injury back in 1977 when he was a player at Minnesota. And he was relegated to the duties of student manager. Gophers had a great club that year. Paul Molitor. Ooh, bad swing on the inside breaking ball, and True is a strikeout victim here in the eighth. A ten other players drafted off that team. Anderson, who you're looking at, was the student manager. Now, last trip of the year, bus ride home, Dick Siebert, the chief, said, hey, Anderson, get a cap and some paper, and let's vote for the MVP. Collect the votes. He collects them, and Anderson's the winner. Siebert says, must be a joke. Take a re-vote. They go back, and the guys vote again. Unanimous most valuable player on the Gophers 77 team and he was a student manager. Quite a tribute to that head coach. He's quite a man. We had a nice chat with him today. Lineup turns around now and Greg Johnson will lead it off or will hit with one out here. Johnson with a base hit back in the sixth inning. One for three.
Gordy Tipton, the third pitcher the Cowboys have used tonight. Senior right-hander Randy Rivera started. Gave up six runs in the first three innings. Tom Kafuri came on. Did an outstanding job, even though right now he stands to be the loser. Tipton's fastball misses the outside, two and one. And now Gordy Tipton. Three and one now. Now you got your leadoff hitter hit. He's been struggling at the plate. He's got good speed. You'd like to get another run. You put the take on three and one in this situation, you let him hit. I don't think he will. I, I think he'll let him hit. That he did, and it's grounded toward third. Coca across to Cervantes. Nice pick. Nice pick by Manny Cervantes, and two down here in the go for eight. The reason I said that, Jim, the ball's over by the line. It's just a bouncer, but it got to third fairly rapidly. Coco just went into the game, throws low, but Cervantes makes a good scoop. The reason I said that, you have the sidearm right-hander. It's tough enough when you're, when you come in there. If you're ahead in the count, you might as well get your racks. Brian Robbie takes that fastball in for strike one. Now, had there been no outs, it's a different story. And the slider a little bit high. Popped up in the infield. Simons calls off Cervantes and puts it away for out number three. So Tipton has a one, two, three, eighth inning to give the Cowboys a shot to tie it or win it here in the top of the ninth. Going to the last chance for Oklahoma State with the Gophers leading seven to six. Peerless faucets with their total faucet and finish warranty are no gamble. But for a short time, there will be a jackpot. The Peerless $5 jackpot rebate on all Peerless do-it-yourself faucets. You really know how to impress your clients, huh? I mean, who needs conference rooms when you can have this kind of togetherness? Hey, what are you guys doing? Training for submarine duty? Who are you? You should have stayed at Holiday Inn. They have everything you need for a perfect meeting, and they'll guarantee it. Or stay here, lose the account, your job, your house, your car, your dog. Check out 10 minutes. Why take chances? Stay with someone you know. Holiday Inn. Thinning hair. It's a problem most of us will face. But now Revlon has the solution. New Nutrisome Supplement. Nutrisome is scientifically proven to make your hair thicker and healthier looking. This week on our ESPN Scholastic Sports America basketball special, you'll meet our choices for the best high school players in the class of 89. And you'll see some of this year's wildest long-range shots. Wednesday. NCAA College Baseball on ESPN was brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Audi. Conform to the road, not the rules. Audi. The alternate route. And by Carver Trip, America's finest finishes that enrich, protect, and preserve the natural beauty of wood. And the Gophers go to the top of the ninth inning, holding that one run lead. And it's in the hands of young freshman left hander John Lowry. Well, they're with the bottom three in the order, but uh, with that order that, that Gary Ward has, they're still dynamite. And with Lowry facing the left-hander Cervantes, John Anderson wants to get his bullpen ready for the right-handers that come up. That high fastball right by Cervantes, and Lowry quickly ahead 0-2. Carl Johnson on the left of your screen and John Rogi on the right warming for the Gophers. 
Well, we've seen dugout shots of college players with rally caps. Those are out caps. They want a couple of out, three outs this inning. That's refreshing. I love that. Yeah, one of the joys of covering college baseball is the level of enthusiasm that you see from the coaches right down to the players and the fans. Saw that last week, of course, down in Starkville, Mississippi. The enthusiasm of the fans fouled out of play and Cervantes stays alive. Even though he doesn't have a high average, Cervantes coming into the game at 275, one area where he has really been valuable for Gary Ward is he is a very disciplined hitter and he's drawn a lot of key walks late in the ball game. One in particular last year against Texas A&M that opened the door for the Cowboys to win that game. Just misses the he breaking ball. It. You think Lowry wanted that? He <laughs> wanted it. He hey. hopped around that mound. Hey, I don't blame him. I would have wanted it too. That's a tough pitch. Here's the delivery. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't blame you, young man. I want that one too. Yeah, nice job by Wilson framing that slider in there on the corner. <laughs> and now misses with the breaking ball and the count. Goes to two and two. John Lowry trying to pick up the win for the Gophers. To center field, Johnson on the run will retreat and play this on a hop. So the Cowboys with a one out single and I guess there is what you give up when you play your outfielders deep to guard against the extra base hit a ball that under normal circumstances may have been an out. He had a break back on the ball so it wouldn't go over his head. He can't take a chance on trying a, a shoestring catch. I think we're going to have a pinch runner. Gary Ward said he's not the fastest of foot Cervantes. So let's see what takes place. Well, he's having a chat down in front of the cowboy dugout to tell the pinch runner exactly what he wants. So Wilson will come on to run for Cervantes, but he hangs in. Cervantes does against the left-hand pitcher and picks up a leadoff single here to give the Cowboys a chance to tie it. Lance Wilson in the pinch run for Manny Cervantes. That'll bring up catcher Tony Kunis. Lead tying run at first on the road. I would expect they wouldn't be sacrificing here. Not usually. Wilson, a 5'10 freshman out of Overland Park, Kansas. That's catcher Tony Kunis you're looking at right there. He looks down at Gary Ward for a sign. Squib foul out of play. Count evens at a ball and a strike. You played a win on the road. And you played a tie if you're the home. Breaking ball in, strike two, says Kurt Marino. A ball and two strikes. Remember, after our college game here, Sports Center, Chris Berman, Larry Burnett previewing NCAA championship basketball tomorrow night. Visit with Mark Schott, plays of the week. All the exciting sports news. Courtesy throw over to first. And Wilson back in plenty of time. Change up and Kunis way out in front of that. Lowry has his first, fifth strikeout, and what a time to get it. Both Nagel and Lowry have had outstanding change up. Way out in front on that pitch.
Steve Bosco, the Cowboys center fielder. He's got a hit in three trips tonight, steps in. The tying run is at first base. We're in the top of the ninth. The Gophers clinging to that 7-6 to six lead. Just to quickly recap it for you, they scored six in the first three innings to take a 6-0 lead. The Cowboys came back in the top of the fifth to tie it. Grounded toward third. Anderson to Robbie. The Gophers have won it on a slick double play. Anderson to Robbie to Munson. And John Lowry, our Diet Coke player of the game, does the job for the Golden Gophers. So what a job, Dick, by this freshman left-hander under those kind of circumstances, I'm sure the toughest competition he's ever had, Oklahoma State. He did an outstanding job, had a uh, change-up that worked well. Uh, on that last play, the double play would have been called anyway because the, the base runner slid past the bag, and the second base umpire was calling double play, but, but Robbie hung in there real well and threw a strike to first anyway. So there's our Diet Coke player of the game. Five innings, just the two hits, a walk. I think we'll make that five strikeouts, and he picks up the win. Let's take another look at that final out. What a double play. Anderson. Now he goes right in. He continues on. And that's what Dick Williams is talking about. The Gophers win at 7-6. Stay with us. We'll be right back to the Metrodome. I'd call my house colonial. Well, contemporary colonial. Ramblerish with a touch of Spanish. And it gets very, very cold, very, very hot, all on the same day. Well, I was thinking of a window that was round, but kind of squarish, uh, and with a peak. I don't want the usual. It's got to be me. You know. See Marvin Windows at N.C. Bennett Lumber, Southside Lumber Company, and Sawyer Cleaver Lumber Company. Good softball teams depend on experienced players, and good players depend on experienced help in selecting their softball equipment. That's why they come to Lee's Top Line Athletics. With over 12 years' experience, Lee's has the expertise, the selection, and the prices you're looking for. Lee's is also the place to go for your company or team jacket. And don't forget, Lee's is the area's soccer headquarters for all levels of play. That's Lee's Top Line Athletics. Instead of tired ideas, it offers an inspired idea. The permanent all-wheel drive Quattro system. A system that believes in traction, not tradition. Because it assigns power to whatever wheels need it, whenever they need it. Ample reward for resisting the commonplace. I'm taking the alternate route. Oh, there's your line score. The Gophers win at 7-6. Great job by young John Lowry. Five innings of perfect middle inning relief. I know you had to appreciate that. Relievers coming in like that for you. Uh, I love the changeup by both left-handers for uh, Minnesota. But Jeffrey, uh, I thought he did a heck of a job, too. All right, next week, Stanford and Arizona State, a rematch of last year's title game right here on ESPN. Gophers win at 7-6 for Dick Williams. I'm Jim Cott from the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome where Minnesota defeated the Oklahoma State Cowboys 7-6. Ball had a lot of spin. It just rolled right up his uh, his his wrist off the heel of his glove. I don't know if he'd have been able to make a play had he come up with it. 
So the Gophers have a base runner to lead off the seventh, and their cleanup hitter, Dan Wilson, steps in. Wilson on the night is two for three and has scored two runs. They scored that in error, Jim. That's a tough play. Tough error for Bobby Carlson. Wilson takes the fastball from Kafuri in for a strike. Updated hockey scores there in the bottom of your screen. Nice block by Kunis. I guess those are things that go unnoticed in the box score, but appreciated by managers. Here you got a tie ball game, seventh inning, and, and just a little block like that by Kunis keeps the lead run out of scoring position. That's the case where a pitcher won't be afraid to throw that ball in the dirt. They know they have a catcher back there that can block it. I mean, everything doesn't have to be waist high down the middle. You can't pitch that way, Jim. You know that. Yeah, that's a good point. If you have a, a catcher back there that you know can block the ball, gives you a little more confidence in throwing that breaking ball down in the strike zone where you're supposed to throw it. Gates back quickly. Talk about academic All-Americans. Here's a young man, sophomore Dan Wilson, carrying a 3.7 grade average. Lays off the high fastball. Two and one, nobody out. Gophers trying to advance that lead run to second base. John Anderson, in his eighth season here at Minnesota, said this is the top player I have ever recruited. One of the most sought after high school players. This one driven down the line into the right field corner. Just foul. Burnitz runs out of room. And first base umpire Charlie Larkas says no. Just foul. It wasn't too far foul. They'll be running all day on this one if it stays fair. Just by a foot. So Wilson showing some good power to the opposite field. Hits it right down in the corner. Gates will retreat to first base. There's a look at the Oklahoma State bullpen. Mike Gardella, the lefty, and Gordy Tipton. The Kent to Colby clone on the right side there. And with all the right-handed hitters in the lineup, he faces usually only right-handed hitters. Well, this will be unusual if Carl Johnson, the right-hander from the Gophers, comes into the ballgame. You're going to see two pitchers in the college level that both come from submarine to sidearm, similar to Kent Tocalvi and Dan Quisenberry. Runner on the move, and he's got second base stolen easily. So Gates moves into scoring position. Now, Dick, you've got a situation. You have your cleanup hitter in the box, a 3-2 count, and obviously you'd like to see the hitter hit the ball to the right side and advance the runner, but with your cleanup hitter in a full count, that might be asking an awful lot of him. Well, he's got pretty good bat control, and he's been shooting for that hole over there. He just missed hitting the ball down the right field line. And you have a heads-up base runner on second base. Driven to right field. It. Did what he had to do. Burnett's back near the wall, comes up with it. A nice catch in right field, but Gates will advance easily to third base, and what a great at bat by Dan Wilson. Did what he had to do, and he, he nearly hit the ball out of the ballpark. To the manager's, or coach's box score. <laughs> And with Gates advancing to third base to put the lead run on third here in the seventh inning, Tom Holliday, the Cowboy pitching coach, will make a trip to the mound. Here he comes. And a point to the bullpen. They want the right-hander, Gordy Tipton. So Kafuri does a good job. He keeps the Cowboys in the game.
Tipton will come on with the lead run at third base and one out here in the bottom of the seventh. The Cowboys and the Gophers still tied at six. We'll be back in just a moment. I'll be there next week. Of course, Mr. Hyler. The Lincoln Town Car will be waiting for you. At Budget, give us three days' notice and we'll give you all the comfort of a luxurious Lincoln Town Car for only $44.79 with unlimited miles. Hello, Budget Rent-A-Car. I'd like to reserve a car, and I'll take that free upgrade. Certainly, Mr. Hadley. I'll At Budget, a free upgrade is yours for the asking. And a frequent flyer card will get you unlimited mileage. Value mile after mile from Budget. Hello, Budget Rent-A-Car. The product. The vehicle. The testing grounds. The results. STP oil treatment is the edge. Right-hander Gordy Tipton, a six-foot-four-inch junior out of Sand Springs, Oklahoma, pitched junior college ball at Connors State. See what he's done so far this year. Four saves. And coming in to face the right-hand hitter with that submarine sidearm motion. 19 strikeouts in 18 innings. And Dick, we're seeing a bit of big league strategy at the college level here with maneuvering this bullpen late in the game. Well, we have two outstanding coaches, and Gary Ward said they would do, his pitching coach Tom Holliday said they would do exactly this if the situation came up. Uh, this young man already has two saves in the, in the Classic. He inherits Brent Gates, the runner at third base. Of course, he still, on the record, belongs to Tom Kefuri. Kefuri did a great job in the three and a third innings he worked after Rivera was touched for six inning, six runs in the first three innings. Kefuri came on to start the fourth, and the Gophers picked up just two hits off Kefuri and the one to lead off this inning. Rather questionable single that was topped down to third base. Jay Anderson will be the hitter. And we've got a ball game here that I'm sure many expected uh, Oklahoma State with all their firepower to be somewhat of a mismatch for the Gophers. But I think Minnesota showing everyone tonight the great program they have had here for many years and why they are the Big Ten defending champions. You know, that's a good thing also that uh, John Anderson was saying should they play up here early in the year and they have inclement weather and it doesn't uh, conflict with the twins they can come right in here and play and Anderson delivers with a shot to right center Burnitz cuts it off but the Gophers have taken the lead seven to six here in the bottom of the seventh That sidearm, underarm didn't seem to bother him. Well, he did what good hitters try to do off that kind of a delivery. Hit it the other way. And breaks the tie. A run is a run, but that was an un unearned run, and Kafiri probably deserves a little better than what he got. Jeff Munson, the first baseman. Steps in for the first time against Tipton. He's two for three on the ball game with an RBI, his 15th of the year. And the sidearm breaking ball. That'll kind of test your courage a little there as a right-hand hitter when you see that breaking ball coming from down under. That pitch is tough on a right-hander. Hit deep to left field. Perna back, looking up. Can't find the ball, and it bounces into the left field stands for a ground rule double. Perna, the left fielder, though I doubt he would have caught the ball anyway, had trouble picking up that fly ball, hit deep to left center. As he was going over, he ran, he looked up, and then uh, evidently took his eye off the ball because he ran again, and he knew, did not know at all where the ball was. He's just waiting for it to hit somewhere. It doesn't look like he would have received uh, uh, enough room to get the ball. I think that's an example. Anybody that's played in the dome, and it's kind of unfair for youngsters coming in here, never having played 
in the dome before, but outfielders that have played here will tell you, you cannot take your eye off the ball for a minute. Outdoors, you can usually look around, find the warning track, look back up and see the ball. Not in the dome. If you take your eye off it for an instant, as Perna did there, you'll have trouble picking it up again. So the Gophers with that ground rule double now put men on second and third with one out for co-captain Vince Pallion. And they've broken the tie here in the seventh to take a 7-6 lead. Now Gary Ward says, let's put them on. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Catcher sitting outside <laughs> and tipped and fooled everybody, including the home plate umpire with that one. <laughs> All of us. Now the Cowboys try to get their signals straight. Kunis signals for the pitch out, tipped and throws the ball right down Broadway, or in Minneapolis, I guess they'd say right down Hennepin. So they're going to put Pallion on to get to right-hander Joel Walrip and set up the double play. Brian Hartman in the on-deck circle. And with the side-arming right-hander on the mound, Coach John Anderson will switch to a pinch hitter. See what the... See what the Cowboys wanted to do there, Dick. They wanted to bring their first baseman and play him in foul territory in case the ball got away. Can't do that. You can't do that. And Tipton completes the intentional walk. Anderson with a little encouragement for his pinch hitter, Brian Hartman. You know, that, looking back over that intentional walk, I can't recall a catcher getting down in his crouch with his hand out. Usually they stand up yeah. and then just step outside. So a little pressure on freshman Brian Hartman from Arlington, Minnesota. And he also serves as the backup catcher for the Gophers. He'll come to bat here for the first time. With the bases gotcha. loaded and one out, the Gophers leading by a run. Now here's a play you won't see too often right here on any level of baseball. The Cowboys signaling for the pitch out. Outside edge, evens the count. Get another look at that tricky non-pitch out. <laughs> the only way that could have been called a ball is for height. It yeah. might have been a little high. And Pallion shaking his head saying, why wasn't I ready for that one? Popped up behind the plate. And that'll go out of play. <laughs> You see the red squares there in the bottom left of your screen in our baseball diamond indicating the runners, and they're on every base. The Gophers have them loaded. 